Ghana's economy is very much known as the Guggisberg economy. Sir Gordon Guggisberg was a British Empire colonial administrator in what was then Gold Coast. He designed an economy to focus on the export of raw materials and importation of finished goods, hence the moniker. Any economy with strong fundamentals is resilient, has a well-developed base, is industrialized, and creates jobs. That kind of economy can mobilize resources domestically without much reliance on external support and can even borrow at a lower cost. The citizens of this kind of economy have good roads, good transportation, good health, and good educational systems. For decades, African countries have chalked up successes, but these have not been significant enough to transform their economies. Most countries on the continent are still far from achieving these indicators of an economy with strong fundamentals. They often export primary commodities and import finished products. The Ghanaian economy is no exception. Cocoa and gold are still Ghana's major exports. Ghana is Africa's top gold exporter at 138.7 tons. It has since added oil and gas and some non-traditional commodities. Ghana's reliance on exporting raw materials and importing finished products contributed to the country's persistent demand for and less supply of foreign currencies. This is why, for a long time, Ghana's SETI has been depreciating against the other major trading currencies. Ghana is one of Africa's most prosperous nations, and this is reflected in the cost of living, which is higher than in many other African nations. Inflation is one of the biggest enemies to wealth creation. It silently but consistently erodes the value of money unaware. Welcome to Think Rich Africa, the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business and personal development content to inform, motivate and inspire you. We also want to introduce you to our special African development playlist because we strongly believe that entrepreneurship, rather than global pity, is the key to Africa's growth and development. So, if you're African and you aren't subscribed to our community, you're missing out. Ghana is ranked among the 20 most expensive countries in Africa to live in. A BBC Ghana documentary claims that Ghana is one of the most expensive places to live. In Africa, Ghana is one of the most expensive countries to live in. Prices of goods and services have increased sharply since the beginning of the pandemic. Since the pandemic began, prices for goods and services have shot up, and some people claim the situation is getting intolerable proportions. Rising food and fuel costs have an impact on every aspect of society. Ghana's economy is reliant on imports. Due to a decreased supply of foreign exchange from exports, the nation must continue to purchase foreign currency to cover its import needs. When exports exceed import costs, the nation occasionally records a net gain, but these are merely theoretical gains. The foreign businesses that do business there repatriate the actual funds. They are not prevented from remitting all of their profits by the retention law. The SETI has always lost value in accordance with the seasons. The worst months are February and March. Multinational corporations with operations in Ghana repatriate profits during this time. Additionally, regional companies that had purchased imported goods on credit prior to the Christmas season pay off their debts. These are the main reasons for depreciation of the SETI, and the fundamentals haven't changed all that much over time. Because imports slowed as a result of border closures by the majority of countries, the exchange rate was relatively stable particularly during the peak of the COVID-19 period. But as of February 28, 2022, the Ghanaian SETI, which had lost 7.6% of its value in the first two months of that year, was the worst performing currency among the top 15 African currencies. Since most businesses in Ghana are now recovering from the COVID-19 shock, there is an increased demand for foreign currencies, which is the primary cause of the recent depreciation. This extends beyond Ghana. 
Globally, the majority of businesses are regaining their footing and ramping up production. The nation's inability to obtain loans from the global capital market is the second factor. Successive governments have attempted to control the depreciation of the SETI by borrowing from the international capital market, issuing domestic bonds denominated in dollars, and exhausting the nation's foreign exchange reserves because Ghana is unable to produce enough foreign currency through exports. The SETI depreciates whenever Ghana's sovereign bond is no longer profitable and there are insufficient reserves to support it. The happenings in March 2019 paint the ideal picture. The U.S. Federal Reserve raised its interest rate in that month, making it more lucrative to draw investors. In response, investors disposed of sovereign bonds issued by developing nations like Ghana. Following the pandemic, the global economy is recovering, which is driving up inflation worldwide. From 2020 to 2022, inflation increased from 3.1% to 3.8%. From 1.35% in December 2021 to 7.46% in February 2022, the U.S. inflation rate has increased. Any currency's import costs increase and export costs decrease when its value is depreciated. Some nations purposefully undervalue their currencies to reduce the cost of exports. However, because Ghana's export sector is not very developed, the nation is unable to benefit from the depreciation of the SETI by increasing exports and generating more foreign exchange. The price of imported goods has increased as a result of currency depreciation. The majority of imported goods are intermediate goods used in domestic production. Rising inflation is the result of this. For instance, since a larger portion of refined fuel is imported, the ex-bump prices of fuel heavily depend on the exchange rate. The demand for crude oil has increased globally as most sectors are now recovering from COVID's effects. The supply of crude oil has also decreased since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It's anticipated that the price of crude oil will keep rising for some time. The ex-bump price of fuel in Ghana is anticipated to continue increasing, at least through the end of 2022, as a result of the combination of the SETI's depreciation and rising global crude oil prices. The Bank of Ghana will raise its policy rate in response to high inflation in an effort to rein in the expansion of credit. The cost of borrowing will go up as a result. Eventually, higher borrowing costs will result in higher production costs, which will further drive up inflation. For the country to have enough foreign currency, industrialization, adding value to exports, increasing domestic production, and reducing imports are the long-term solutions. To hasten the industrialization process, the government should improve its one district, one factory, and modernization of agriculture policies. The government's ability to increase domestic revenue will enable it to pay off its debts and fund development without heavily relying on borrowing in the medium term. The government should borrow money from abroad and import foreign currency as a temporary fix. This is only possible once the government has proven to the investment community that it is capable of raising domestic revenue to pay off debt. In order to access eurobonds, the government urgently needs to update the electronic levy's design and pass it as soon as possible. International investors will be alerted by the passage of the e-levy and the reversal of the 50% benchmark values at the ports that the government of Ghana is on the path of fiscal consolidation and that it can increase domestic revenue to service its debt, according to international credit rating agencies. By focusing on other revenue sources like property tax, tax breaks, and natural resources in the short term, the government can also demonstrate its capacity to mobilize domestic revenue. In June 2022, Ghana's inflation rate was about 30%, leading to the highest cost of living in 20 years. The cost of food and other goods is increasing daily, making life more difficult for regular consumers. The reason for this crisis is that, despite admitting that Ghana's economy is in serious trouble, the government will not take responsibility for the country's financial mismanagement. In contrast, the COVID pandemic and Russia's invasion of Ukraine are to blame. Even before the pandemic struck and Russia invaded Ukraine, there were worries about the nation's public debt, 
which is of 2,021 central bank figures, stands at $4-5.5 billion, with a corresponding debt-to-GDP ratio of more than 77%. The government has come under fire for what critics claim is poor economic management, which started even before the coronavirus pandemic and the conflict in Ukraine. According to some analysts, the debt-to-GDP ratio has already surpassed the 81% threshold, and the government's need for a bailout from the International Monetary Fund IMF, appeared imminent. The Ghanaian government recently declared that it had contacted the IMF to request additional funding to stabilize the economy. The government abruptly reversed course after key policy advisors and cabinet members vowed that Ghana wouldn't request another program from the IMF. This is a good deal, and if Ghana is granted an IMF bailout, it will be the country's second in eight years. Additionally, it would be the 18th time the fund has saved Ghana. Its previous three-year agreement, which received $918 million in support, was extended by another year to end in 2019. Ghana reportedly hopes to close a $2 billion deal this time. Ghanaian President Nana Akufo-Addo, who has in the past hailed the mantra of Ghana Beyond Aid, told party supporters over the weekend that his government is going to negotiate a good deal with the IMF. He hopes that this is the deal that would enable Ghana to revive their economy and carry out the task of constructing a more robust economy than the currently in place. The decision to approach the IMF, according to Ghanaian economist Samam Klenz Akbalu, was to be expected because the country relied very heavily on import. Ghana has spent $19.6 billion on average just to pay interest on prior borrowing. Ghana's economy has already been downgraded by rating agencies, making it challenging for the government to take on more debt. Since most of their projects are so ambitious without a corresponding source of revenue financing, so there is always deficit financing and putting enormous pressure on the public purse, in his opinion governments need to exercise more restraint in their spending. However, there are worries that a program backed by the IMF will mean the end of some ambitious social intervention programs, which could ultimately harm regular people. In a Q4 assurance, Addos, we will be able to negotiate and put into action a favorable arrangement. We already have, and we will do it once more in many cases. The goal of such austerity measures is to reduce government spending in the short term in order to regain long-term fiscal stability and investor confidence in the economy. If you enjoyed watching this video, please don't forget to subscribe and become an official member of our growing diverse community here on Think Rich Africa. Thanks for watching and see you in our next exciting video.